New day, new goals, let's own it. Right now we're standing in the UFC headquarters. They got an unbelievable gym here and we're getting ready to meet up with a fitness influencer who is literally someone who's changing millions of people's lives. You may recognize her on Instagram as Hardcore Ainsley. She's built an unbelievable community of millions and you know what, she's impacting all of their lives, teaching them how to balance this holistic, healthy lifestyle through fitness. Now, something that I love about Ainsley that we're gonna get into is like how she balances it all. How does she balance both being a personal brand while building the business and also how she overcame all the different things and, and vulnerabilities that she's had to go through in her entire life. So I'm excited, let's get to it. The raw and untold story of none other than Ainsley Rodriguez. Ainsley, ah, we finally made it happen. We did. I feel like this has been <laughs> such a long time coming. I'm so grateful for you to be here, showing up. Um, you obviously have been spending an awesome day here. We're at the UFC headquarters. Congratulations, that's another yeah. huge achievement. But um, it just seems like you're just continuing to grow. Every time I continue to look at what you're doing, you're just continuing to just change so many people's lives, inspire so many people through health and wellness and fitness. Um, and uh, I'm really grateful for you to, to come and spend some time with us in the community and hear a lot more about you know, how this all came about. Well, um, definitely never had plans on anything turning out this way. Never thought social media would ever amount to anything. Right. Um, I was actually studying to go to med school and I ended up getting offered a part-time job with a supplement company as a demo girl and they had required me to have social media. So that was kind of the birth of my Instagram. It was never to monetize it. It was never to inspire anyone to do anything. And at that point, fitness was kind of just a hobby for me. I worked out because I loved it. Yeah. And the stuff that I was posting resonated with something I had a passion for, right? So I was posting workouts, I wasn't posting selfies, <laughs> um, posting pictures of food. And then my following kind of just started to grow organically from there, um, really took off. A bunch of pages started featuring me. That was a huge um, curve for me too and growth. And here I am today and it did nothing but kind of just keep on learning and keep on giving people what they wanted essentially. How do you feel? Like, how, did, how does it feel n right now? We're about to go into the whole backstory, but how does it feel like thinking about this whole journey that I'm sure is just like, every day, it's been, it's so much has happened, you know, and, and I feel like, I feel like it's a pretty short period of time, but I mean, has it been something for you that feels like it happened quickly, or does this feel like, like there's been a lifelong thing? I mean, it's been about six years, like even with my fitness, I mean, it's been up and down. A lot of people are overweight and then they go to losing weight. I was the opposite. I was way too thin, addicted to the gym, scared of food, I had a bad relationship with that, and then kind of had to learn to balance everything. And as my lifestyle changed, like it's definitely been a progression along the way. I would say, obviously, I'm grateful for it. There are plenty of times where I'm just like extremely overwhelmed. Like yesterday, I wrote a post about anxiety, something that I've definitely suffered with. Like, oh, wow. just again, so much going on, you kind of don't know which direction to go sometimes. So as awesome as it is to have all these opportunities, sometimes you just have to sit back and be like, what's the right choice? Like, yeah. is this the right partnership? Is this not? Like, is this what represents me and my brand, right? Yeah. So I think- Or even just your happiness, down. right? Yeah, that's been a big struggle too, is just kind of finding that balance between work and family, because as you know, like this is a 24 seven job. Yeah. You know, this isn't a nine to five. You work every single day. It's more like work-life integration yeah. than really even so much balance or separation of things. Like it's yeah. kind of like everything just comes together. And it's still a process. Yeah. Like, you know, I'd lie if I say that, you know, I've mastered it completely. Yeah. Obviously our health is so important. It plays such an important aspect of our mindset. But there was moments in our lives where we're like genuinely not taking care of ourselves or we're not happy with where we're at from a health perspective. Everyone assumes like they have this image of this perfect body in their heads, right? And they assume that when I reach this goal, I'm gonna be happy. And it's not the case at all. Because a lot of people say, like you say, oh, healthy body, healthy mind. No, 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 it's the opposite, right? Really? You have to get your mind in check to feel comfortable, accept where you are today in order to progress to where you wanna be, but you're never gonna be happy. 
you're going to get there and then all of a sudden it's not going to be good enough. You're going to want something mm. else. Like, even when I was thin, I had no idea I was that thin. Like, I was just like, oh, no, you know, I want to be leaner. I want to be leaner. And then next thing I know, like, I look back at pictures now and I'm like, wow, I look sick. Wasn't eating, counting calories, driving myself crazy. I wasn't happy. I would neglect going out to family gatherings, going out to with my friends just because I was scared of, like, the food, you know? Wow. So, it, I mean, I, I definitely wasn't happy. <laughs> like, at what point did you decide to realize, like, you had this realization that, like... So it's actually funny. So I was, um, I went to college at FIU mm -hmm. and there was one time, um, you know, obviously all looking for parking, whatever the case is, there was one parking spot someone was pulling out. I was about to pull in and so was another girl. And we were like fighting over that spot. So I pulled in and I like get out of the car and she was like, you anorexic bitch. And um, I was just like, hater, like just, I'm skinny, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and like my family kept on telling me like, you're really thin, you're really thin. And then I think at that point I was just like, hang on a second. like. You know, it's an outside perspective, like family, you know. Right. And I think I just started to kind of think about it a little bit more. And then I started to look at like things that had just deteriorated. Like I used to dance. I had always had legs. Like I started spinning. I got like this, like lost absolutely everything. And I didn't even really notice because I was so focused on abs, 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 mm. right? And um, I think that was kind of just the moment where I was like, hang on a second, you know, and it clicked. And then from there, again, it was ups and downs. It's not like, oh, cool, I need a change. And all of a sudden, like I start changing. Um, everything was definitely adapting, like the relationship with food kind of thing. That definitely took a while. I think yeah. that as my schedule and my life changed, I had to adapt to that. Right. You know, and kind of learn everything that I was missing out on and how to partake in things, but still keep it somewhat healthy. You know, right. it's like I tell people all the time, like, if things don't fit into your lifestyle and what you love doing, you're not going to be doing it very long. Yeah. You know, you might have this goal, be cooped up in your house, eat nothing but, you know, chicken and broccoli and go to the gym for six hours a day, like, and have no life. You're not, you're not gonna, gonna be happy. Gonna be happy. Right. And it's not sustainable. You're going to fall off the wagon, you're going to be miserable, and then you're going to stop doing it. In this next part, we're going to be really getting into the business woman of hardcore Ainsley. You know, a lot of people see the outside, but they don't really see what's happening behind the scenes. And, you know, this, it was a part in her life where she had to go through working with a company that you're going to be very familiar with that had a huge growth but also had a collapse and what she learned from that experience as she was able to take and take those business lessons into her own hands now with her own brand. Um, you know, one thing I really admire about you as well is, um, you know, you very, you're very entrepreneurial, you know, so it's like you're a businesswoman, plain and simple, you know, and I love that about you. you you know, from what I've learned, it's like you built this unbelievable team. You know, you're, um, you know, you built a, a really big business around yourself. You know, how did you learn how to become a, a really good at business? Not because the content and in building a personal brand is one aspect of it, but then running a business is a whole other aspect of it. And a lot of entrepreneurs that I meet with, a lot of them that I invested, that have the creative side, they don't have the business side and right. they fail. How did you gain that, those skills? Um, it definitely wasn't. I did everything by myself for three years. And that's when I hired the first person I've ever hired. And it was my best friend who hated her job and I needed some help. So I was like, hey, come help me. But I think it definitely also comes down to what you said earlier, which is just surrounding yourself with the right people and knowing your strengths and weaknesses. And your weaknesses, like, hey, there's people that are better at you at other things. For sure. Let them help, you know? And yeah. I think that that's one of my things. I'm an Aries. So I'm like, for me, I'm like independent. I don't want to ask for help. Yeah. And sometimes you just need to ask for help. And like, you have the people there to support you and it does definitely help, you know? Yeah. Remember like having an anxiety attack one day because I had so much to do and I didn't want to do anything. Like my best friend came over and just like talked to me for 10 minutes. And I'm like, God bless you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people too, they they have, they just struggle with, with with trusting, you know, like they trusting a team, like delegating, bringing people on. Um, they want to have their hand. I have entrepreneurs I've invested in. It's like they almost like want to like they want to have their hands in every little little aspect, you know. Yeah, um, letting go of some of the power and control, like that's something that I've always struggled with. I don't know if I'll ever be able to completely Fully, do that. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I like that too. Like I like being aware at least of what's going on, whether I have people helping me or not. Like I still want to know what's going on because it's, yeah. it's my business. And at the end of the day, like you said, it's very different if you are the face of something as well because something happens or something, you know, goes wrong. Like you are the person yeah. who is liable for that, right? Yeah. Like your image, your brand, everything gets affected. So you definitely have to be careful with everyone that's around you as well. Okay. So it's really interesting. We had Arvin on the show and, you know, we really went into that whole, that whole unbelievable growth, but then this collapse of this like empire of a business in the fitness industry. 
and getting to know you, you are like a huge part of the, in the brains behind a lot of that, and a lot of the marketing. You know, what were some like the lessons you learned being a part of that brand and that you've now taken into your own business? Um, I would say definitely quality over quantity in terms of, you know, the people that you're working with, the content that you're putting out and stuff like that. Um, I personally think one of the things that kind of went wrong with Shreds was um, just trying to get everyone on board and it not really being the right people who resonated well with a supplement brand or even fitness per se. So perfect example, you know, you could have someone with 10 million followers, right. let's say they promote makeup and you're selling socks. Is yeah. that the right person to push your socks? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. You know, a lot of people get distracted by that number, but you really have to think about like what that person's brand stands for yeah. and what's organic to them. And I think that that's something that I still take with me to this day. I mean, I get approached every day by different people who want to partner, right? So it comes down to what's organic to you, where is your brand going, what does it stand for, and does it resonate with that? Yeah. You know, and that's kind of how I decide now, like my partnerships and stuff like that. You know, um, the shred social media growth, it's pretty crazy because I was on the back end of that when it first started. So the supplement company that I had originally started to work with that had, you know, put me on to social media in general, I took over their social media. So I was substituting while I was studying for the MCAT and there was a summer that we had off. I had some free time, so I took over their social. Now, when I jumped on board with shreds, um, you know, I was just selling supplements through my personal, you know, hardcore Ainsley page. And I looked at the Shreds page at the time they were posting pictures of caps. And me, not really expecting anything from it, just giving my personal honest feedback, you know, spoke to Arvin and just said, hey, like, I just think that there's a few things you guys could be doing differently. I don't think that this really goes with what you guys are doing. So I took over their Facebook page um, within about 48 hours, um, generated more sales than the person who was running it did. And Arvin asked me to take over the Instagram page. Um, he had said that obviously I didn't want to take anyone's job. Yeah. He had said he had spoken to the person. He said he couldn't deliver, you know, any more of yeah. what Arvin needed. So I took over that page and kind of figuring out that side of it, like the sales part, because again, yeah. my page, I was just kind of posting the stuff that I loved and it started yeah. to grow organically because of that. But I actually started to focus more on the Shreds page because that's kind of where I was making more of my money. I didn't really yeah. care about mine. Like I said, this isn't something that I've ever wanted to be in the spotlight, I love the business side of things and sales. So again, I was generating revenue off of that. I kind of focused on that. I uh, made a little bit too much money uh, <laughs> one uh, Memorial Day weekend, to be completely honest with you. So that page actually got uh, taken from me for the payout. They, wow. still, they paid me though. Okay. <laughs> um, so I just want to uh, say that as well. And then that's actually when I started to focus on my own. So like I said earlier, sometimes things happen that you could think it's negative. Like I remember kind of panicking and being like, Oh my God, like that was kind of my main source yeah, of like revenue. Yeah, like you built was, that whole yeah. trends page, you're making all your income from that. and So that's where I was kind of relying on more of my income than even my personal. But when that got taken away, it forced me to focus on my personal. Right. And that's when my personal started to grow. Learn what I needed to know. Yep. That's where I close. Another bigger one open. And yeah. I think that the reason people fail is because they hit these downs and they don't stand back up. Yeah, it's true. So. Ed, Ed Milet, who's is on the sh uh, this season, you know, he, he says very particularly like, life happens for you, not to. Absolutely. And that's like a perfect example of that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you're rocking the UFC, we're here in the UFC gym, <laughs> obviously you guys probably hear all the noise and see everybody working out, I mean, so what brought this partnership together and are you, are you excited about working with uh, such an iconic brand? I am super excited, um, UFC gym pretty much has all of the toys I want, like I do, quote unquote, <laughs> love to train different, right? Um, I got, I used to do the bodybuilding stuff, different body parts every day, I got so bored of it. 
So um, UFC had reached out to me. I went to take one of their classes, a UT class, which is like a high intensity interval training class. Loved it, took boxing the next morning, and then realized that they had absolutely every toy you can think of in this gym. Fell in love with it, and then that partnership started to grow because again, it was organic to myself and my brand. What are some, you know, some milestones that maybe you have hit and then some things that you're really looking to achieve for this next chapter? Yeah, um, I, well, pending inspection <laughs> will make the fir uh, my first purchase on my first home. So that is extremely yeah, exciting. Yeah, that's um, so awesome. Yeah, that's and then I was telling so you good. earlier, so one thing that I had done um, previously, like at the beginning of this year was every morning and every night in a notebook, I would just write down, I am going to do this, this and this. And I have checked mark pretty much everything so far, depending the house, so fingers crossed on the wow, inspection, but. Wow, it's so dope, yeah. it's so dope. Yes, that's what it's about. Also, just like, when you, when you, it's almost like when you put it out in the universe, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, once you kind of get clear as to like, what it is that you genuinely want, and, and there's no right or wrong. Like, the fact that you were just every morning, you know, every morning, every night, kind of just writing it out, you know, putting it out into the universe, and then attacking it on a day-to-day -day basis, even through all those ups and downs. Um, do you think about, yourself as a leader also from you know the community that that you that you grew up in or the youth or from a social impact or or any of that that aspect as well have you started to kind of think about that that side of the yeah it's your been work? kind of interesting watching people like even like my family my mom my mom used to eat like she still eats <laughs> but you know like grilled cheese and chocolate cake that's what i grew up on and now she's kind of been a little bit more like, you know, I had hosted um, a boot camp at UFC, for example, and she stalks my social media, but she's like, can I come? And then the last one she came to too, and she brought like my aunt and my cousin, and I'm like, this is so awesome. awesome. You know, like just yeah. bringing people together and kind of creating that, you know, community. And I think that's what's important too, is just everyone being able to communicate with each other, share their struggles. Like even my clients, there's a community that we have, and they're constantly like showing pictures of their food, their own transformations. And this is stuff that I'm not asking them to do. That they're doing on their own and all that does is like motivate each other you know that's so cool yeah you know what's interesting to me is like i i feel as much as there's this huge boom that's happening in fitness and, and wealth especially within the influencer marketing space there's it's, it's got to be really competitive right mm -hmm. and you know my question to you is like does the does the outside ever play a role you know like where you you know the 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 fact that you're obviously beautiful or do you see other people coming in that look a certain type of way you know, how do you really differentiate yourself? What I guess is what I'm asking, compared right. to like such a competitive landscape. There is always gonna be a younger and prettier girl out there. Right. There's always gonna do that. I think that's where it comes down to, so it's funny. So I did shoot today for UFC, right. but if you look at my page, I pretty much completely stopped photo shoots. And I stopped them because I just didn't see what value that brought to anyone anymore. I'm like, here's a photo that I think I look better in than I do in real life. <laughs> like, like, how does that, you know, like, is it ego that I'm feeding? Like, what's the purpose? So for me, it was just more so relating to people, being vulnerable, which, like, sometimes I would, like, write wow. a post and then just be like, do I really want to do it? Like, even yesterday, I put, like, you know, about anxiety, right? And originally, I had to put, I have, or I had suffered from anxiety. And I'm like, hang on, had? I still suffer yeah. from this, right? <laughs> right? So I'm like, be real, Ainsley. Like, you still do. And I think it's like yeah. this facade that sometimes you just have to realize, like, it's okay not to be perfect. And that's definitely something I struggled with. You know, on Instagram before, it was all photos. So people yeah. were doing, half of them were photos. Everybody wants to be perfect, yourself. yeah. Like, and, and then I think just getting that feedback, like now that people, maybe there was a point in time where that was what it was, like who had the prettiest photo. Yeah, right. But now I think people just appreciate the raw. Like I can tell you that a photo shoot for a photo versus something that's just raw, like no makeup, just woke up in the morning, talking about how you're uncomfortable or, you know, how you're down that day or whatever the case is, just resonates so much more with people where they're able to relate to that. And I think that that's really what it comes down to now and like how you're able to differentiate between everyone else out there. It's not just another pretty face. It's how do you, you know, how does that person relate back to you? Um, I remember I would always ask my female friends, like especially one of my assistants, I would ask her take on it. Like, hey, like who do you follow and why? And um, there was one of my friends one time that had said there's um, a very big female influencer, I don't want to name who she is, but she was like, you know, this girl is absolutely beautiful but I don't follow her because she's unrealistic to me. 
I'm never gonna get there. Like I follow people who is someone that I can relate to, that I feel like I can aspire to be, but not some form of something that just looks absolutely so perfect that I feel I can never be that. Because yeah. what ends up happening is it drags them down. And I think that that's a big thing with influencers too. Yeah. Like at least me, I personally stopped looking at other people's pages. Yeah. Because then sometimes like you take everything for face value. You think that while wow, they're doing this, that, and that, and it makes you feel worse about yourself. Yeah. And most of the time, like, it's not even really what's going on behind the scenes. They're struggling just as much as you are. They're going through stuff. They're unhappy. So I think that that's something that can just really mess with people's heads. So just being vulnerable allows people to realize like, wow, oh, like she's not perfect. She goes through things. Like, yeah. She still goes through anxiety. She has down days, yeah. you know? And as much as I want to try to spread positivity and be this bubbly, happy person all the time, like there's still days that I'm not, you yeah. know? I'm so, so happy that you brought that up because I think everyone's tired of it. You know, I think that like regardless of its fitness, or just, you know, entrepreneurship, it could be, you know, um, fashion it could be makeup you know it could be so on and on and on all these different things like I think people genuinely want authenticity and not just like the word that used to be thrown around they genuinely want like yeah. that raw that rawness and that's the way that that's how you're gonna form real connection with people and I think that's what you're doing like so so and I made my life easier less edits less cuts yeah, yeah. <laughs> less music needed in the background so oh my it's god like... social media obviously has like completely changed the game mm -hmm. Um, how do you see social media, you know, going into 2019, go over this next year? How do you see this evolving? I mean, have you, you've been one of the pioneers for so long. Do you still feel that like Instagram is like, uh, you know, such a powerful platform? Do you think that you, you know other platforms yeah. like? I mean, Instagram's thoughts? algorithm has definitely changed. Anyone who's social, who's on social media, can vouch for the fact that it doesn't exactly favor all of us now. Um, I think there will probably be another social media platform that will, you know, end up popping up. But I think that just advertising, connecting, um, pretty much building community and everything has shifted towards social media in general. Whether it's YouTube, Instagram, or a new thing that pops up tomorrow, I do think that social media is not stopping. I think it's just gonna keep yeah. on growing. Everyone's a part of it. We even have big brands now, you know, Secret Deodorant, you see Gym, you know, things like that that are just continuing to start to utilize influencers and see the value in it because um, I just spoke at a conference um, in Chicago a little bit ago, and the best way to explain it is there's so much more value when someone personally uses something and it's integrated in their life rather than just seeing an ad on a television screen or something, right? right. So you have to think of it like your mom recommending a product to you, you're more likely to use it than just seeing an ad for it on television, right? Yeah. So it's that trust and that community that you built around you and your brand that really allows people to have, you know, that trust and faith in what it is that you're promoting or preaching, yeah. which is what brands now need to do and connect with. So like, what advice would you give to someone out there that's looking to actually build a brand, mm -hmm. that they, they actually, they found this passion um, in their life? Maybe it's fitness, maybe it's something else, that they really genuinely are ready to like, okay, I'm ready to be vulnerable, I'm ready to let, like go all in on this, regardless of what I may look like to my friends or how I may be judged, or like I'm tired of judging myself, like I'm tired of trying to prove myself. I wanna, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna like really try to build my community and, and build something special around that because it's what they love and it's, it's how they wanna bring something to the world and help others. What would be some, some advice that you would give to the younger you? I think that it's about taking risks, knowing your vision and being consistent. Not necessarily letting the outside noise affect your path or where you wanna go and not giving up. And it's like, no matter what hurdle you go through, knowing that like you wanna to get to this point and that stopping is not gonna get you any closer. So I think it's just being genuine to yourself, what you believe in and what you stand for. And kind of just every single thing that you do needs to be in line with that. I hope you guys really, really took notes on this episode because I think Ainsley, as an influencer, touched on some really important things. Obviously, her growth is just unreal. She's working with all these brands like UFC, BPI. She's built a massive community on social media. She's turned it into a huge, profitable business for herself. But I think some of the key things that really hit home for me was the fact of her getting comfortable with the uncertainty in life. Her just going after it day in and day out, going after that vision. and also doing it while being okay with her imperfections. Really 
you know, opening up about what it means to be authentic as an influencer. It's no longer about the perfect picture or the perfect highlight reel. It's about being raw. It's about opening up about your vulnerabilities, your imperfections, you know, the fact that she is still facing anxiety today, something that I truly relate to. You know, I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. Definitely comment. Let me know what you took away from it. And as always, let us know if there's anyone else that you think that we should bring on next season. And like always, I appreciate all of you. My gratitude. I hope you guys are enjoying this season. Make sure to subscribe and spread the word. It's your boy, GA, over and out. Peace. Guys, so if each one of these episodes resonates with you, the lifestyle, the impact, you know, just really like the, the whole model that all these entrepreneurs represent, it's something that I think, you know, really helps them stand as a world-class leader. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to give you guys some extra value other than just watching these episodes. So I created a report, and it's called The Map. It's basically a guide to give you and teach you how to create this influence, this impact, this income that a lot of the entrepreneurs and leaders that I bring on the show have. The MAP stands for Monetizing Your Expertise, Amplifying Your Message, and Positioning Your Personal Brand. It's free, all you guys gotta do is click the link in the description and we'll email it to you free of charge. And it's something that I wish I had when I first became a creator. So hopefully you guys enjoy and thanks for watching Leaders Create Leaders. Peace.